have wedged my clay into a circular movement. So not only to eliminate any air pockets that may sit in the clay, but I already started orientating my clay in a specific direction. So if I would give it a pear shape like this, then I can put it down on the wheel head and let the clay come down and squish out any air pockets. Now of course if you are left-handed um, you can have a switch like I have and you can just literally switch your wheel around to where you go clockwise with your wheel in which case your ball of clay when you start out you will flip it over to the other side to where that I almost want to call it the tongue part, the part where the air pockets would normally pop out, that that goes also clockwise. Note how easily I can tuck my elbow into my side of my body and use the leverage of the bone right there to hold the clay and even by using just one hand I can get this clay to go up, which means that I'm already getting the particles even better lined up. But if I keep control with the other hand on this side and if I push with my body forward and keep using that leverage, look what's happening there. A little speed up on the wheel and you get it to there. I'm speeding up my wheel so that I can use the centrifugal force to help me bring the clay up all the way. And then instead of going down on the clay like this, which carry the possibility that I may mushroom the top part of it and collect some air and water right there, I am going to literally use what I call a wave technique. I'm going to push the clay over to the side. Note now as I come back into this position I'm going to slide this hand down all the way to the bottom so that I can make sure that I keep this dome shape. You don't want to get the clay to where it gets flat at the top because what would happen is you would start collecting all the clay from the sides and it will start making a little pocket at the top which will collect water and air.